Kal Halal, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Raka Kodash, the blunders to the apostles and the elders of Great Stone, and salutations to the Akim out there pushing this word in our sincerity and our truth. Right. This lesson is going to be based on Zechariah chapter 2, verse 11. Right. Yesterday, while I was um, doing a, a lesson on Revelation chapter 21, verse 3, you know, speaking about the tabernacle. You know, I brought out Zechariah 2 and 11 and 2 and 10, you know, and read down um, to verse 11, you know. And, you know, this this is one of the scriptures that, you know, unlearned Christians or, you know, maybe brothers in the truth who are young um, may misunderstand because of the wording, you know. So I, um, I made a, a note, you know, that I would do a lesson on it. So here I am, you know, hopefully... This lesson is edifying, you know, through the Spirit. So I'm just going to read the 11th verse and then jump to the top of the chapter and we'll hopefully get some understanding on the, of what this verse actually means, you know. So this is Zechariah 2 verse 11. And many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day and shall be my people and I will dwell in the midst of thee and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto thee. Now at face value, this would seem as if the Heavenly Father is calling all nations you know, apart from Israel, to be his people, right? <clears throat> if you read it just, you know, out of context like that, but if you read it, you know, with understanding and with with the context or with the text, you know, as it says, with understanding, you'll see that it's actually referring to Israel, who, which have been scattered among many nations, right? So we're going to read from the very top of the chapter, and it says here, God's favor to Zion. Right, because the topic of the chapter is Israel. Right, the topic of the chapter from reading from verse one is Israel. It says, Verse one, I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. Then said I, Whither thou goest? And he said unto me, To measure Jerusalem, and see what is the breadth thereof, and what is the length thereof. And behold, the angel that talked with me went forth, and another angel went out to meet him. And he said unto him, Run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as a town without walls for the multitude of men and cattle therein. For I, saith the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire round about, and will be the glory in the midst of her. All right, so again, the topic of the scriptures, the topic of the, um, the chapter is Zion, Jerusalem. Right? And it says it's going to be inhabited right, um, as towns without wall for the multitude of men and cattle there because the Lord is going to bring back you know, um, all the children of Israel that have been scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And as the scriptures say, we, um, we cannot be measured in our numbers. So Israel is a large multitude. Right? <laughs> it says, Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, which he was talking about um, Babylon you know, at the time. Um, and it's spiritually no. Right, it's talking about America, which is Mr. Babylon the Great, which is also, you know, the land of the north. Right, say, saith the Lord, for I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven, saith the Lord. And this is a hint to understand, yeah, um, verse 11 down below. The Lord said, I have, I have spread you as four winds of the earth, meaning the Lord has spread the children of Israel, the seed of Israel, far into the earth, the four corners of the earth among all nations. Right, so the Israelites that have, uh, that have dwelt you know, among all nations, don't you think that they will start mixing in, you know, with the other nations, looking like them, talking like them, believing their religion, believing their philosophies, dressing like them, you know, of course, right? He says, deliver thyself, uh, O daughter that dwelleth with the, o, o Zion that dwelleth with the daughter of Babylon, right? Because um, at this point, you know, if you go into the, um, the history, right, Zechariah, was exhorting the Israelites to leave Babylon and join the rebuilding of the temple at Jerusalem. But a lot of them were so comfortable at Babylon that they didn't want to leave. They, they, they became so comfortable in their captivity because they had gotten a little wealth that they didn't want to leave. You know, and you can parallel that with today. You know, you have a lot of men who are very comfortable in Mr. Babylon the Great, very comfortable in this earth right now, that they don't want to leave. You know, if you if you really take a look at, you know, let's say IUIC, right, you see that those men are, are comfortable, yo. Right now, you know what they're doing? They're creating a reality TV show. Who creates a reality TV show, yo? What does that have to do with teaching the word of the Lord, right? 
Anyways, moving on to verse 8. For thus saith the Lord of hosts after the glory, as he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. So this is actually talking about the, the other nations, the, the, the Goyim, right? The heathen, right? It says, For he that touches you touches the apple of his eye. So why would the Lord on one hand be speaking about judging the other nations for what they have done unto Israel, but then on the other hand say, you know what, you're going to be my people. But we're going to get understanding of that anyways. It says, For behold, I will shake my hand upon them, and they shall be a spoil to their servants. Meaning they're going to be the, the, the servants of the Israelites. right? And you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion. For, ho, for lo, I come and I will dwell in the midst of thee, saith the Lord. Right? And many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day and shall be my people. And I will dwell in the midst of thee. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto thee. And the Lord shall inherit Judah his portion in his holy land. And shall choose Jerusalem again. Be silent, O all flesh, before the Lord, for he is raised up out of his holy habitation. So we're going to get some understanding on verse 11. Right? Now, there's a particular phrase in this verse that pretty much blows the lid on the entire thing. Right? And that phrase is, shall be my people. And even if you go to joined to the Lord, there's only one set of people that was joined to the Lord. That word joined there goes back to lawyer or, or lawaya. Which, which, which um, the word Levi goes back to, right? Which means joined unto me. Only Israel has been joined unto the Lord through, what? through that covenant. But we're going to focus in and zone in on that phrase, shall be my people, right? If you do a word search for that phrase, shall be my people, every single instance of that phrase is speaking about, is speaking concerning the Lord and Israel. And we're going to bring out a few of them to, to shed some light on this verse and see who are the many nations that shall be joined to the Lord and be his people. Because the, the Lord has never, right, said that the, the other nations will be his people, right? So let's start here in Jeremiah. We're going to start from chapter 24, verse 5. The point is at verse 7, I believe. Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, right, like these figs, so I will acknowledge them that are carried away captive out of Judah, whom I have sent unto this out of this place into the land of the Chaldeans for their good. So this is speaking around, you know, the same time frame because it's, it's Israel being scattered into um into the land of Babylon. For I will set mine eyes upon them for good, and I will bring them again into this land. Right. So spiritually, it's also talking about now because we've been scattered, you know, to uh, to what Mr. Babylon the Great, right? By the um, mainly by the transatlantic slave trade. Right? I will set mine eyes upon them for good and I will bring them again to this land, speaking about the land of Israel. And I will build them and not pull them down. I will plant them and not pluck them up. Right, Showing you that it's actually talking about no, because we were again plucked up out of the land when we came back after the, um, the ancient Babylonian captivity. Right, And I will give them an heart to know me that I am the Lord. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return unto me with their whole heart. So this is talking about who? The children of Israel being the people of the Heavenly Father, and Him being our God. Right? If we jump now to Jeremiah chapter 30, we're going to read from verse 18. But I believe the point is at verse 22. It says, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tent. So again, the subject is Israel. And I have and have mercy upon his dwelling places, and the city shall be builded upon her own heap, and the palace shall remain after the manner thereof, and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them that make merry, and I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. Goes back to in Zechariah where it says that many multitudes shall in shall be in the land, you know, that's why it will have no walls, you know, figuratively, right? It says, I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. Right? Again, going back to the same thing. Verse 20, Their children also shall be as aforetime, and their congregation shall be established before me, and I will punish all that oppress them. Meaning who? The other nations. Right? And their nobles shall be of themselves, and their governor shall proceed out of the midst of them. Meaning only Israelites will rule Israelites. Right? And, uh, and I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach unto me, for who is this that engaged his heart to approach unto me, saith the Lord? And ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. 
So again, this is um, this is speaking to the children of Israel, right? Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goeth forth with fury and continuing whirlwind. It shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. The fierce anger of the Lord shall not return until he have done it, until he have performed the intents of his heart. In the latter days, he shall consider it. And we're in the latter days right now. So we're, we're, we're um, about to witness the fulfillment of the Lord delivering his people physically, right? And bringing us into the land of Israel. And we shall be his people and he will be our God, right? Let's go on to another scripture that says the same thing. This is Jeremiah chapter 31. We're going to read from verse 1. Right? It says, And at that time, saith the Lord, will I, will I be the God of all the families of Israel? Right? Will I be the God of all the families of Israel? Not the God of the entire world, but the God of who? All the families of Israel. And they shall be my people. Thus saith the Lord, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, which I went to cause him to, when I went to cause him to rest. The Lord has appeared unto me of old, saying, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Again, I will build thee, and thou shalt be built, O virgin daughter of Israel, O virgin of Israel, and thou shalt again be adorned with thy tablets, and shall go forth. In the dances of them that make merry, right? If we jump down, right? The, the entire you know chapter here is great, right? But we're going to jump down here to um, I believe it's the last part here, the new covenant. It says, "Behold, the day, the um, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will sow in the house of Israel and the house of Judah with seed of men and the seed of beasts, and it shall come to pass like that, like as I have watched over them to pluck up." And to break down and to throw down and to destroy and to afflict through the curses because we have, you know, sinned against the Lord. So I will watch over them to build and to plant, saith the Lord. In those days they shall say no more, the fathers have eaten a sour grape and the children's teeth are set on edge. For every one shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eateth sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. Behold, the days come, it saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my commandment they break, although I was an husband to them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts and write them in their in their inward parts, Salakia, and write them in their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Right? And they shall teach every teach no more every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, and the least of them, from the least of them, unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Thus saith the Lord, which give the sun for a light by day, and the ordinance of the moon and the stars. For a light by night we divided the sea when the waves thereof roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel shall also cease from being a nation before me. Thus saith the Lord, if heaven above can be measured and the foundations of the earth searched out, I will also cast off the seed of Israel for all they have done, saith the Lord. Right? So the heavenly father will always be for his people. Right? And the gathering from the other nations are the Israelites that have been scattered, right? And the promise that we will be his people and he will be our God, right, is only to the Israelites as we've shown you over and over and over again, right? This is Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 36. And now therefore, thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, again, specifically speaking to Israel concerning the city, Whereof ye say, it shall be delivered unto the hand of the king of Babylon by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence. Behold, and here's a, a big point, I will gather them out of all countries whither I have driven them in mine anger. That's how we became driven into all nations. That's why the scripture says many nations shall come to the Lord and be joined unto them. Those are the Israelites that have been scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. All right? In my fury and in my great wrath, and I will bring them again unto this place, and I will cause them to dwell safely, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. So again, it's specifically 
telling you that the people who are gathered unto Israel, right, into Jerusalem, are the Israelites that have been that were scattered in the first place, right? And I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for the good of them and of their children after them. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good, but I will put my fear in their heart and they shall not depart from me. This is the, all these scriptures are referring to the new body that we will receive, yo. Putting the laws in our heart, you know, like in Ezekiel 36. This is a new body that we're going to get, yo. Right? Which is, which is created and crafted to do the Heavenly Father's will. Right? Yeah, I will rejoice over them to do good. And I will plant them in this land assuredly with my whole heart and with my whole sword, soul. For thus saith the Lord, like as I have brought all this great evil upon these people, Right, so will I bring upon them all the good that I have promised them. Right, now we're going to read Zechariah chapter 8, right, which also speaks about the coming peace and prosperity of Zion. Again, the word of the Lord of hosts came to me, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I was jealous for Zion. Right, again, specifically speaking about Israel with great jealousy, and I was jealous for her with great fury. For thus saith the Lord, I am returned to Zion, I will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth, the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Thus saith the Lord, there shall yet old men and old women dwell in the streets of Jerusalem, and every man with his staff is his hand for very age, and the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls in the streets. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, if it is marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of his people in these days, should it also be marvelous in mine eyes, saith the Lord of hosts. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, behold, I will save thee from the east country and from the west country, where we have been scattered and I will bring them and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem and they shall be my people and I will be their God in truth and in righteousness. So again, it's speaking specifically about the children of Israel being gathered from the nation that we, we have been scattered and us being called his people and he being our God, right? So, you know, hopefully this lesson was edifying. Right, and you know, brothers and few sisters who watch understand what Zechariah chapter 2, verse 11 is speaking about. Right, many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day, shall be my people. Hopefully, yeah, the understanding there, right, is that it's the Israelite foreigners that have been scattered, right, and the people being his people that that phrase, especially, and shall be my people, is speaking about you know, the children of Israel. The Lord never said he would dwell in the midst of the nations, yo. Right, till next time, shalom.